Everybody talks about the great things about San Antonio, but you know what? Enough with the fluff. Let's talk about what you need to know that may cost you a lot of money. We're gonna dive into five different neighborhoods around the San Antonio area. And at the end of each, I'm gonna talk about the rentability of these areas if you decide not to buy in the areas that I go over. The reason I'm telling you this is because everybody talks about how great San Antonio is, even I talk about it, but you need to know the worst. In this video, I'm gonna dive into five different areas of San Antonio. So these are the topics I'm gonna hit in each of these five areas. Why would somebody wanna live there? What's the drive time? What are the amenities around it? The prices of these neighborhoods, property taxes, the age of the homes, potential future home equity, the availability of new construction, and what is the rental opportunity? Can you rent the house you buy for a fair rental value? Or if you need to rent and you can't buy in the San Antonio areas, what's the rentability in those neighborhoods? So let's dive right in with our first neighborhood. It's gonna be downtown San Antonio. Downtown San Antonio has a very specific way of living. So why would somebody wanna live there? I would say there's so many different activities and festivals, fiesta. There's so many different events in downtown. I can see why somebody wants to live there. Also, the walkability is very good. Public transportation is, nah, not so good, but there is a lot of Uber and walking distance things around you and delivery services that I can see why somebody would wanna live there. The drive time is virtually zero because everything is very close around you. Parking, on the other hand, is definitely gonna be a problem. Amenities around downtown. The restaurants is plentiful. There's plenty of places to eat, very delicious local food. Highly recommend the food outside of the Riverwalk. Believe it or not, there's way better places outside the Riverwalk near downtown than there is on the Riverwalk. The prices of downtown living will vary. So if you live in King William, the average median list price is 426,000. Lavaca is 485,000. Tobin Hill is $460,000 average list price. It's pretty similar to uh, Government Hill and Dignity, which is very similar. And it's the communities outside of the immediate Riverwalk area. Those are very easy access to the highway, believe it or not and there's really nice communities. The homes were built probably in the 1900s or 1910s, 1920s, and some of the homes still were built and stay on tree trunks, believe it or not. Before Pier and Beam, they used to build homes, at least here in San Antonio, on tree trunks. Downtown, there is availability of new construction. Over on Center Street, there is new construction developments. They start around the 450s, and up. So believe it or not, there is still new construction availability downtown. There's a lot of rental opportunities in the downtown areas. Some are the building complexes by the Pearl, some are around the Riverwalk, and of course, private owners have lots of Airbnbs and long-term rentals all around downtown. So there's plenty to rent from, and the rental pool, if you buy something and rent it out, is also a really good market. Property taxes is a big reason why people like to avoid downtown. The city of San Antonio has put a 2.8% property tax on downtown. So it is much more expensive to live downtown. And especially if you're investing downtown, you can't get the homestead exemption, which usually saves you around 15 to 20% of your property taxes downtown. So it's a little more expensive than some other downtown areas. My professional opinion is the Pearl is the best for potential equity growth. You have so many developments around the Pearl, Government Hill, that is really where people want to live. A lot of the very good restaurants, a lot of the parks, it's a good mix of shopping, amenities, and close proximity to food, and it's a very diverse community because you don't necessarily have all tourists. You have a lot of people and families that live there. So it's a really good mix. And honestly, it's my personal favorite. The Pearl area is definitely number one for equity potential. Now, King William Lavaca does have a lot of history and the homes were designed beautifully uh, by the Spanish colonies who developed them. And 
are very popular with its eateries and its style, its proximity to the Alamo area at Riverwalk. But I think the potential for business and a little more luxury does kind of lie more in the Pearl District. Next neighborhood on the list is the very popular Stone Oak in San Antonio. Stone Oak has been developed back in the 80s to house a lot of the doctors and high-ranking military personnel that comes to San Antonio because it was a very blue-collar town back then. Median list price of Stone Oak is 420,000. Now, I think that number is undervalued because in a lot of the realtor groups that we're in here in San Antonio, we all talk an, around the Stone Oak areas and their average overbidding price is 20 to $100,000 over list price. It's one of the hottest, most desirable areas. Every single house has tens of thousands of, of dollars over list price with full appraisal waivers. So it's an extremely competitive market. And I think people started to realize that is one of the best rated schools, the, the most luxurious dining and shopping. Now, why would somebody want to live in Stone Oak? It's various reasons as a perfect combination of great schools, amenities, drive time is very, very short to downtown. Some of the Stone Oak homes were built in the 80s. Now, there's also new developments in Stone Oak, but the last new development that happened was around 2015. And today, there's really only custom homes that are being built or complete renovations that are happening in certain Stone Oak neighborhoods, but there really isn't any kind of production builders where you just drive in, you see the model home and you pick your custom home. They don't have that really anymore. If you go up to Timberwood Park, that is an area which is right next to Stone Oak. You can find a production builder or you can buy a lot and build your own custom home, but they're becoming a lot more rare and there's sometimes a lottery system where you have to go uh, in Timberwood Park. Median list price for Timberwood Park is 500,000. So you can see Timberwood Park is a little bit newer community. They started developing it uh, in 2010 and continued. The growth is very, very high and it's easy access to 281, which is right in the middle of a three or four lane expansion on both sides to get a straight shot into the downtown San Antonio area or the airport. There's not a lot of rental opportunities in Stone Oak because there's a lot of home ownership. Now, if you buy a home under the median house price, then it's a good chance that it would rent pretty quick because of the demand and the areas of the schools that it's in. Now, property taxes, I'm also gonna throw at you the HOA. Stone Oak is known for at least one HOA for the entire immediate district of Stone Oak, which is a Stone Oak HOA. Plus there's a second HOA and sometimes three HOAs within Stone Oak, depending on the neighborhood. Now HOA fees just to be in Stone Oak is about $150 a year, which isn't too bad. But then the second HOAs of the immediate neighborhood could be three or $400 a month depending on which neighborhood. So that's definitely something you gotta watch out for. And you're in the city of San Antonio limits and you're inside Bear County, which is tax rates can be up to 2.3%, which is higher than just being outside of the city of San Antonio limits, but still in Bear County, you're closer to 2.2%. The third area where you need to consider avoiding is Helotus. So around Helotus is Medina Lake, within Medina County and also Bandera County. I lumped those all in together because they're pretty close in proximity. So the reason for living there is you're just outside of the city of San Antonio. So you, you do have less property taxes, which is still around 2.2. Now the downside of living in Helotus or Medina County is there's not too much access to downtown. You have Petrenko, you have Bandera Road, and Braun Road to get into downtown, but it gets very, very congested. There's really no big highways to get from very far out in Bandera County all the way into Bear County, which is where the city of San Antonio is. So drive times can be closer to 35 to 40 minutes, depending on where you live. Amenities are not as local as one would seem being out in the rural counties. If you go to the downtown Bandera, it really looks like an old Texas town, which I think is really, really cool. Age of homes is gonna be area specific. So if you're at 1604 and Bandera Road, 
that is the beginning part of Helotus. Those homes were built early 70s, early 80s, and as you go further out, they've developed a lot more. So those homes can be early 90s, early 2000s, all the way up to brand new construction. As the city of San Antonio grows, as the population grows, it always gets pushed out. Just like any other city, the city of Helotus is going to be more populated, so there is potential for equity growth. I think the equity potential could be better in Stone Oak, Timberwood Park, and the Hill Country areas but it's still a lot of growth and development that's going on in the Holotus Medina County area. So the fourth one on the list is going to be Alamo Heights. Now within Alamo Heights, people kind of lump in together, Alamo Heights, Almost Park, and Terrell Hills, all three kind of butt up against each other and actually they're not part of the city of San Antonio. They're their own city with their own police departments, their own fire departments, and why would somebody want to live there really is the exclusivity. You're very close to downtown, you have very high priced homes, and you have really high rated school districts according to niche.com, and the property taxes are closer to 2.5% in these districts. The availability of new construction is pretty much zero. There's no new communities in the Almost Park, Alamo Heights, and Terrell Hills areas because it's landlocked at this point. So if you're gonna build new construction, you pretty much have to tear something down and rebuild it. Alamo Heights has a really cool vibe in that town. There's a lot of mom and pop and small businesses around there. There's so many different stores at the quarry market and you have a movie theater there, you have Whole Foods there and it's you don't have to hop on a highway to get to these shopping districts. I can see why somebody wants to live in Alamo Heights. It's perfect right next to the airports and the downtown area. Very, very solid communities. Now, let's talk about the price of these communities. Alamo Heights median list price is gonna be 685,000. Now that's way more, that's almost double of what the San Antonio median house price is listed. You can literally live one block over in the city of San Antonio, be just as close to these amenities and not have to pay the Alamo Heights or the Almost Park price and still be within very close proximity, you just won't get the school district. The last one and my favorite is going to be Hollywood Park. Now Hollywood Park is the best for equity potential, holy smokes. This area is pretty much in the perfect location. The median list price is only $475,000 which is nothing compared to an area like Almo Heights or Almost Park. For 475,000 median list price, you can be very close to Stone Oak, very close to the airports, all the beautiful shopping areas on 281. You're close to the hill country, you're close to Canyon Lake, there's so much. And the drive times are very minimal because that area is landlocked. There is no new construction in Hollywood Park. Hollywood Park is joined next to another extremely exclusive community, which is Hill Country Village, Texas. They're their own city, their own mayor, their own police department, and are you ready for this? The average list price for Hill Country Village is gonna be $1.8 million, right next to a town I just referred to, which is Hollywood Park, so you can get into these exclusive communities with these great school districts, great locations around San Antonio for a million dollars less or more than a million dollars. I think that's an excellent value to get into these communities. The age of the homes in Hollywood Park and Hill Country Village is around the 1980s. Now, most of them sit on at least half acre lots. So if you're on a half acre lot right next to the heart of the airport or the downtown area, that's pretty good. It seems like you have a hill country feel, but you're very close to amenities. So if that's something that you want, great. But if you don't, if you actually want to be in the hill country, then I would avoid the Hollywood Park and Hill Country Village. Rental opportunities in Hill Country Village and Hollywood Park are almost zero. There's not a lot of rentals around the five, six, seven hundred or million dollars now there may be short-term rentals like Airbnb uh, that I've seen before, but for a rental opportunity, this is probably not your area and I would avoid it. Availability of new construction in 
Hollywood Park or Hill Country Village is again almost zero, just like Alamo Heights. It's landlocked and there's not any new developments unless you're restoring a house or taking a house to the dirt and then rebuilding it. Hope this information helped you. I may have convinced you not to buy something and that's okay. You need to make sure that you know everything about these areas and make the best decision for you. This is Trey with the Cavalry Group, brokered by Real. Check out this video of the hottest zip codes and I named some of these areas in the next video. Thanks for watching.